Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, you can read Acts 11 about how Peter talks to everybody at Jerusalem and says, oh yeah, the Gentiles were, you know, given the Holy Ghost and they're coming back in. And I'm totally convinced that uh, the, the Gentiles, which everybody will tell you, oh, well, they're non-Jews. Well, they may not be Jews. Judah, which was only one of 12 tribes, but I'm convinced that they're the Israelites, the divorced Israelites, Jeremiah 3.8, Jeremiah 31.31 31, with the new covenant. But we're going to do Acts chapter 12. Peter gets thrown into prison. Oh, yeah. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, let's see. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And I'm pretty sure that's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's James who wrote the book of James, who had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. Pretty sure. And he killed James, the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So he killed James. He's harassing the church and he arrested Peter. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Oh boy, how do you pronounce that? Okay, it's a quarter quarter nion. At least that's what uh, Noah Webster, you know, the Webster Dictionary guy. Uh, it means, you know, like a quarter, you know, four, uh, a file of four soldiers. So, uh, yeah, let's see. So he's got four soldiers guarding him. That's a small squad for those of you that were in the army. Squads usually like four to six men, a squad, if I remember correctly. So, all right. Um, oh, he's got four quarter quarter nions uh so there's 16 soldiers watching him four four fours and delivered him the four quarter quarter nions of soldiers to keep him intending after easter to bring him forth to the people now i'm going to stop right here people will tell you oh this easter thing see the king james bible has a mistake Oh, yeah. Well, does it really? Somebody pointed this out to me. And somebody explained why it's not a mistake. All right. So if you go to the book of Leviticus or Exodus, what comes first? Passover comes first. And then seven days, you have the days of unleavened bread. So you got Passover, unleavened bread, the week of unleavened bread. All right, Passover first, and then you got the week of unleavened bread immediately after. Boom. So what, he, what is here? 
verse 3. And because he saw Herod please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So Passover is past. And now these are the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, delivered him to four quarter, quarter nions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, virtually every single year that I've been paying attention to this stuff, it's been Passover, unleavened bread, and then after unleavened bread comes Easter. Easter is always after. At least that's been my experience. Passover is never, uh, well, I should, is never uh, after Easter. Easter always follows Passover. It's always Passover and then Easter. So if, if it Passover had already happened and then it's the days of unleavened bread, if Herod's waiting after Easter to bring him to the people, it couldn't be Passover. It can't be because Passover had already passed uh, at least a day or two, possibly half a week or a week, maybe two weeks. So this rendering is correct. And Herod is not an Israelite. Herod is a satanic pagan, a heathen, just like his whole family. So he's not keeping Passover. He's intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. And everybody will say, oh, this is a mistranslation in the King James. No, it's not. No, it's not. Passover, unleavened bread, Easter. That's how it works. You know, if, if this was, if, if Herod was going to, intending after Passover to bring him forth to the people, well, then he's going to have to wait another 300 and probably over 350 days until the next year to do it after Passover. No, it's Easter. Easter is the spring goddess of fertility. That's why you got uh, chocolate eggs and the Playboy bunny. I mean the Easter bunny. Yeah. Yeah, eggs and bunny rabbits. Yeah. Herod was bad news. He, he was not keeping kosher, if you know what I mean. So, so when somebody tells you that Easter is wrong, no, they just don't understand. Or they're a heretic. You know, possibly they don't understand, but, you know, people that push all this stuff, a lot of times they're heretics. Maybe not always, but... You know, and I don't claim, I do not claim to have all the answers. All right. I was just, I've done a little bit of research here and there. So, you know. All right. So they put him in prison, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Oh, yeah. The church is praying for Peter. I'd have been praying for him too. I think Peter's my favorite apostle, but hey, what can I tell you? And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. Wow. So he's sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So he's got, he's, he's, a, uh, he's basically a sandwich in between these two soldiers. And then there's soldiers at the door. There's probably a soldier outside the window too, on the outside, you know. He's got 16 soldiers looking out after him. Oh yeah. 
you, uh, you know, Herod's like, Peter, you ain't going nowhere. And then I'm going to make you my Easter sacrifice. Oh, yeah. But God had other plans. Verse 7, And behold, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord. Well, that's what this series is all about, right? The angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, you know, gave him a kick, I guess, maybe, I don't know, a kick in the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. You know, get your sorry butt up and get moving. I'm getting you out of here. We're going to have a jailbreak. I think that was Thin Lizzy, wasn't it? I don't remember. That was my rock and roll days back in the 70s, I think. I don't know. Back when the dinosaurs were roaming the earth. Yeah. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, you know, clothe yourself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. You know, put your clothes on, and come on, let's go. That's the Bob translation. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Yeah, I'd be thinking, is this a vision, or am I, am I having a dream, or what? Verse 10, And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. <laughs> you ever see that in the horror movies? The, the door opens by itself? Yeah. Only this is a horror movie, right? Then came unto the iron gate, which leadeth unto the city, which openeth, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street. And forthwith, the angel departed from him. Okay, so the angel got, did his job and uh, got him out of the prison. And uh, as soon as he got him away, uh, the angel took off. My job's done. So there we go. All right, verse 11. And when Peter was come to himself, you know, he's like waking up. He's like, wait a minute, this isn't a dream. I'm out of, I'm out of prison. Whoa. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Yeah, prayer changes things, you know. And as Peter knocked on the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Yeah, you know. Hey, can you open up? You know, so Rhoda comes and she's listening to Peter. Hey, open up, open up. She was so happy, she forgot to open the door and she runs to everybody and says, Peter's out there. Yeah. So she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. Oh, you're crazy, girl. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. I guess they thought he was already dead and it's his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Oh, yeah. You know, he's probably beating on the door. Hey, open up, dudes. Let me in. But he beckoned unto them with the hand to hold their peace. You know, be quiet. Shh. Declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Okay, guys, I'm out of prison and I got to get out of here. Herod's going to be looking for me. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? 
Oh boy, I wouldn't want to be one of these soldiers. Uh, 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 uh. Verse 19. And when Herod had sought for him, you know, Herod's looking for Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers, the soldiers, and commanded that they should be put to death. Oh, you guys were sleeping on the job, and you let Peter escape. So one of you, or all of you, were in on his escape. You probably got paid off. Well, that money ain't going to do you any good because I'm going to kill all of you for letting Peter escape. Your, your lives for his. Let me tell you something, people. Uh, failing your guard duty was a serious offense in the days of Rome. Very serious. I mean, you know, Herod put him to death. Um. And he, Peter, went down from Judea to Caesarea and their abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, so he's got his king's clothing on, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. So, you know, he's making a speech. He's talking, right? An oration. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god, and not of a man. And immediately, and I'm sure Herod uh, sucked it up like a sponge, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Oh, yeah. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. And I think that's going to be the end of Acts chapter 12. Alrighty, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, Jesus' precious name, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Amen.